Hi everyone, today's quick tip video is how to make shakers. So shakers might seem intimidating, but they're actually really very easy. This was a request by somebody when I posted a shaker tag on my Instagram and TikTok. Basically for a shaker, you need a bottom section, you need a section which is a piece of acetate and then you need some kind of top layer or frame. I'm going to show you how to do it with a simple shape and then how to do it with a print and cut image. I have a bottle shape cutting file on my desktop which I'm just going to drag in and you can see here I've already made shaker elements but I'm going to get rid of those and this is just a basic cut file shape. So if I wanted to make this into a shaker, you know, either a shaker element to go in an album or on a scrapbook page or on the front of a card, or I wanted to turn it into a tag, you know, I could punch a hole in it when it's finished. You just need, as I say, to be able to break the design down into three basic elements. So. I'm going to start off with this basic shape and I'm going to come over to the edit tab and scroll up and you can see here that this shape is 2.66 inches wide and 6.35 inches high. The height doesn't really make any difference at the moment, I'm just going to show you how to do the process but obviously if you want to make something a certain height then you can do you know you can do that when you're creating your shape so let's say I want to turn this bottle shape into a shaker I'm going to leave the basic shape as it is untouched I'm going to right click and create a duplicate and it's the duplicate that I'm then going to use to make the other elements of the shaker. I'm going to also now duplicate this twice because I'll probably need another one in a minute. So at the moment I've just got three of the same shape all at the same size. This one here in the middle is going to become the frame, if you like, that the shaker bits are going to show through. So this is the same size, okay? So I'm going to make sure that this one's selected. I'm on the edit tab. I'm working in the download or computer-based version of Canvas Workspace. You can do this in the online version. I'm just using this because I've been using it already today. So with this shape selected, I'm going to come down to the offset. And I don't want to alter the height of the original size. So for the frame, I'm going to make my offset an inward offset, okay? So I'm going to say I want 0 0.24. I'm going to say inward. I'm going to leave the corner type as round because this is a, a rounded shape. And under select original line, I'm going to say leave as is because I want to end up with two shapes here, the original and then the inward, okay? So I'm going to say okay. So that has now given me the outer, which is the same size as the original shape, and the inner layer. Now I want to make this a frame. You could leave this as it is and group it, but I prefer to actually punch the inner from the outer because that way, if at some point in the future I go to resize this and I forget that it's just grouped and not a punch out then that can cause me problems with maybe a shape moving or getting it out of alignment so the smaller shape has to be on top of the bigger shape and it and it is in this particular instance because we did an inward offset so if I just select the outward and fill it with black and then select the inward and make this pink for now, you'll see what I mean. So the pink inward offset that I've just created is on top and the black's behind. I'm going to select both and I'm going to say subtract. This is all under the edit menu. So now I've got a frame. 
and I like to use 0 0.24 because that tends to be not too thin that it's fiddly for applying you know the adhesive and not too fat so it gives me a decent amount of, of width on the frame to be able to apply my 3D foam. Now some people like to have their acetate layer the same size as the base layer. Me personally, I like mine a bit smaller because the way that I do my shakers, and you know, this is entirely up to you how you do yours, I glue my frame on top of my acetate. Then I turn it over so it's acetate side up and I apply my 3D foam all around the edge and then I put my shaker bits on the base and then I stick this on top. So I like to make my acetate a little bit smaller than the frame and that way if I don't glue it down, you know, completely accurately, I have a little bit of, of wiggle room and I'll show you what I mean. So this layer, I'm going to make red. And if I lay that on top, you'll see, obviously, it's the exact same size because it was the duplicate of this. So this time now, I'm going to come down to the offset and I'm going to make an inward offset of 0 0.12. And because I only want one layer, I'm going to come down here and I'm going to say delete this original offset when you make me the 0 0.12 inward and then I'm going to say okay see you saw how it shrunk and again I'll just make it red so you can see it better so if I put these two together now and line them up on top of each other and zoom in you'll see that this red layer which would be I'll fill it with red so you can see what I'm talking about this would be my acetate layer when I glue this acetate to this frame, you'll see that if I don't glue it down completely accurately, I've got a bit of wiggle room because the frame is slightly bigger. So let's just go back down to 50%. So I've got my original base, I've got my acetate layer, and then I've got my frame, which I'm going to put to the front just so that you can get the idea. I'm going to select them all and I'm just going to center them all on the horizontal and vertical and that's how to make a very simple acetate or shaped shaker. So this whole section here that you see in red which is the which I would cut in clear acetate, this whole area here will be the whole shaker. So you've got your three elements, you've got your base, you've got your frame and you've got your acetate. So that's in its simplest form. So I'm not going to keep that because I've already got my bottle shape, as I say, saved on my desktop that I showed you originally that I, you know, created this shape from. So I'm going to delete that. So now let's say you want to make a print and cut shaker, which is what I posted on Instagram some time ago. So I've got a PNG printable on my desktop. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm in Canvas Workspace for computer or the download version or the offline version, some people like to call it. I'm going to come over here to the left hand side to the auto trace icon and I'm going to select that. I'm going to say I want to trace an image from my computer. So I'm going to click the box on the left. And that's now going to bring up a box for me to navigate to where I've saved my printable. And it's here on my desktop. So I'm just going to click, select it and say open. And that's going to bring in my printable. For a shaker card, I'm not bothered about having this landlocked area cut out because I'm going to print this and I'm going to turn it into a shaker. It doesn't need this section cutting out. But if you want to know about print and cuts and how to you know cut landlocked areas then I have done another video on my channel and I will link to the print and cut playlist underneath this video and in the accompanying blog post if I remember 
um, where you can go and have a look for that. But for this one, I'm just I'm just wanting the outer edge. So I want the cut line all around the outer edge. So I'm going to say OK. And that's brought it on. And as with all auto tracing on the print and cut, it comes in as a grouped item. So while this is all still grouped, I'm going to size it down a bit. OK. Now, the other thing, obviously, I need to do if I'm doing a print and cut is I need to come over to the right hand side to the artboard. I need to change my matte screen from 12 by 12 to A4 and I need to turn on the registration marks. So this would be the element I print. I'll get the scan and cut to cut it out. But from this cut outline that's around this printable at the moment, which I'll show you in a minute, I'm then going to make my three elements for my shaker. Now again, you can leave the cut line directly tight to the design if you want, or you can make your initial cut line a little bit bigger if you want. It's entirely up to you. For the purposes of the video, I'm going to leave it as it is. If I come over to the layer icon, you'll see it's, it shows me the outline that the auto trace put in for me and it says shape and then it also shows me the printable image. Okay, so what I want to do with this selected, I'm going to right click and ungroup and that's going to give me my outline and this is the printable that's going to be the printed PDF. I want to make my shaker elements from this outline. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to select the outline and I'm going to hit duplicate three times to give myself three copies of this outline. Then I'm going to select just these two elements, come back to the edit tab on the right hand side and central them, centralize them on the horizontal and the vertical. So the, the cut line after this has been printed will cut out for me and then I'm going to regroup them. Okay, so that's all I need for the print and cut. So now I'm going to show you how to make the shaker. So I'm just going to put that on one side for a minute. So I'm going to bring my first cut outline in. So these are obviously duplicates of this cut line that goes around here, as I've just said. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make a background for my print and cut to sit on. Now, again, you don't have to do this. Depending on how thick the cardstock is that can fit through your printer, you could just make the acetate layer and the frame and stick it directly on top of this printable. I would print this on white card. My printer doesn't like very, very thick cardstock. It's it will print cardstock that's thick enough for me to make a card base. So, you know, maybe about what, 230, 250 GSM, something like that. But if you've got a printer that will print on thicker cardstock, then you probably won't need to make this base. But this is just how I do it. As I say, I'm just showing you how I do it. Once you get the basic idea, you can play around with it and adapt it however you want. Now, again, I like my base that my printable is going to stick onto to be bigger. So with this first outline selected, I'm under the edit tab on the right hand side. I'm going to come down to where it says offset and I want an outward offset of 0 0.24. I want it outward because I want it bigger. I'm going to leave the corner type as round because this is a more rounded type shape. And I don't need this original cut line that's just a copy of this first one. So I can say in this particular instance, delete the original. But when I say OK, just give me an outline that's 0 0.24 bigger than what was originally there. OK, so I'm going to say OK. And when I click OK, you'll see that this gets bigger. OK, so did you see it jump bigger? So this is now bigger than this, but that's how I like my base card to be. So that's that one. I'm going to bring in my second outline. And this time, this is going to be my acetate layer. Now, again, you can make your acetate layer 
the same size as your frame or you can make it a bit smaller to give you a bit of wiggle room when you're gluing it onto your frame and that's how I like to do mine. So with this one I'm going to ask for an outward offset again but this time I'm going to make it a bit smaller than this one. So with this second one selected I'm going to say offset. This time I'm going to say give me an offset of 0.12 outward and you can delete the original because I don't need it. So again when I click OK you'll see I'm only left with one shape but it will go it will jump to be bigger. Okay so that's my acetate layer and then with the last one I'm going to make my frame. I want my fret the outside edge of my frame to be the same size as this base layer because my frame is going to sit on top of my base layer. Sandwiched in between those two is going to be the acetate. So with this one now, I'm going to come back to offset. I'm going to say I want it 0 0.24 because that's how big I made the base layer. I'm leaving everything the same, but this time I'm, I want to keep my original outline because that's what's going to make me the frame. So under select original line, I'm going to say leave as is. Now this time when I say OK, I will have my original outline that's been taken from the print and cut and then I will have a 0 0.24 offset line bigger like so. Now the offset is always on top. If you were doing an inward offset, the inward would, would always be on top. But if I click in the middle of this design here, you'll see that the bounding box is going around that 0 0.24 offset I've just made. And to make a frame, the smaller section has to be on top. So with this bigger offset selected, I'm going to right click and I'm going to say arrange and centre back. Now it looks as though nothing's happened but I'll just left click on the page to deselect and then I click in the middle again here and now you'll see the bounding box has jumped to the smaller frame because I've just sent the bigger one behind. And to make a frame, you, the, the smaller element that you're punching out of the bigger element has to be on top. So now I'm going to select both of these and still under the edit tab I'm going to say subtract. And that's punched this small outline out of the big outline. So if I select this now and fill it with colour so you'll see it better. So again, another little trick I like to use. This is just a visual. You don't have to do this, but it might kind of help you see it better. I am going to click on any of my colour swatches. So this is my fill box and this is my line colour. Doesn't matter which one I click on, I'll just click on line for now. And whenever I use my colour swatches in any of my videos, somebody always leaves a comment underneath the video saying, how do I get the pencils? These coloured pencils, when you click on either of your colour swatches, are an Apple Mac feature. If you use Windows, when you click your colour swatches in Canvas Workspace, you'll get however your colour, you know, your colours show up, whether they're in squares or whether it's a, a, cir a circle with all different colours. I don't know how it appears on Windows, but on a Mac, I can choose to have like a colour wheel like this and I can, you know, move the colours around. I can have a line style I can have a block colour or I can have the pencils and I just always have mine set to the pencils. So I clicked on the line style and that brought up my colour swatches. Now again, on mine, you should have this somewhere on yours. I have this little dropper, I um, colour dropper on the bottom. If I select that, I automatically get this circle with pixels in it. If I come up to my print and cut, and I come up to the top of the design where it's darker up here and left click, it will now change this element that I've got selected to that colour and it now shows in my line style. And if I drag, 
if I left click on this swatch and drag it over to the fill box, it fills it in. Okay, I'm only doing this so you can see it a little bit better visually because I would cut these out of you know the, uh, this color cardstock it as but it's just to make it easier to see on the video so again if i come up to i'm selecting the background element now if i come up to the line style the last line style i chose is down here in the swatches so i can select that close that down and now that's made that a lighter color but if I want again if I want it to match this if I select this I can then drag this into a box here at the bottom and it will save that color for me so now if I select this background piece and click this one it turns it to the darker color and again if I drag that over to fill it in you'll see that these are the same color and I've just colored them in this one would be my acetate so obviously I can't I can't color that in because acetate see-through but this would be how it would make the elements so I'm going to send that one to the back I've got my printable that would go on top then my acetate would sit on top and my frame would sit on top like so and that would make my shaker now what you've got to do you need to separate your print and cut from these other elements so this is the print and cut that's got the cut line attached to it and this is grouped so the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to select these three elements I'm going to do Command C because I use a Mac. If you use a if you use Windows, I think it's Control C to copy. Or you can go up to the top of your page and under Edit you can do Copy. Okay, but I'm I've just selected all those. I've done Command C to copy, and then I'm going to hit Delete on my keyboard just to get rid of them temporarily because I want to save this as the print and cut for the scan and cut to be able to cut out once I've printed this okay so the first thing I'm going to do I've got my registration marks on I've got my element on the mat I'm going to go file at the top of the page export PDF images only I'm going to just say I'll call it ginger teacup I'm going to save it on my desktop and click save and that's put this PDF ginger teacup on my desktop as a printable element with the registration marks on so I'm just going to leave that there for now now I have to save the cut line so I come back to the top of the page I go export slash transfer it says to me the image won't be transferred, which is fine because we know that we can't send images to the print and cut. We've got to print them through our printer. And that's what I've just shown you how to do. Print it as a PDF document. So I'm going to say, OK, I can either send the cut element, which is the outside of this ginger, directly to my scan and cut. But just for the sake of the video, I'm just going to export the cut file just to my desktop. So I'm going to choose Export FCM. I'm going to say ginger teacup and I can give it the same name because it's been saved as a different file type. So the first time I saved it, it was a PDF. This time when I click save, it's going to save it as an FCM, a cut file. And again, if I bring that in, you'll see it. There's my outline to go with my printable. OK, now I want to just left click anywhere here on the mat and I'm going to do command V. To bring my cut elements back you would do control v or edit paste however you prefer to do it so for these cut elements i don't need the registration marks so i can select my principle and delete it I can come over to the right hand side into the artboard i can change it back to 12 by 12 and take the registration marks off 
Okay, so now I'm just back to a regular, normal cut file. And the way I do mine to make it easy for me to remember is I always put my base layer first, then I put my frame, and then my acetate layer I put at the bottom. And then when I send this over to the machine, either directly via Wi-Fi transfer or I put this on a USB stick and put it into my scan and cut machine, when I call this up, I can load two pieces of cardstock or one piece of cardstock to cut these two. I can select this bit and say delete, or I could put a piece of acetate on the bottom and cut it all at the same time. But I normally cut my acetate separate. So once I get this over to the machine, I would select this bit because I know I always put the acetate at the bottom of the mat. I can delete it, cut these, then call up that cut file again, delete those two and cut the acetate. So for this one now, again, it's just file, export or transfer, FCM. I'm just going to export it to my desktop just to show you. One thing to point out for anybody that may be new, when you're doing the Wi-Fi transfer, you can only send over one file at a time. So if I'd have done transfer for this, for the outline of the print and cut, I would have to go to my scan and cut machine, retrieve it and save it into the machine and then send this one over. If I don't do that, if I just send this directly to my scan and cut machine now, when I call up retrieve data, this is the one that will show. It won't show this one I sent previous because it always overwrites the one you've sent before. I hope that makes sense. So you have to retrieve it, save it into your machine, and then come back to your work, Canvas workspace and send over the next element. Okay, so that I'm just going to save it to my desktop just to show you. So I'm going to go file, export slash transfer. I'm going to say export. And then I'm going to say ginger teacup FCM. So I know that this is the FCM element, so just the cut file element. And save it again on my desktop. So there's my ginger FCM now. So I've got the three elements all on my desktop. So what I would do, I would double click on the PDF to open the PDF up. Make sure you've got your registration marks and then I would click print and I would send this directly to my printer and print it. OK, I'm not going to do that because I'm, I'll do it when it's, you know, all off camera. But then I'll show you the elements and then I would send each one of the cut files over, retrieve it, save it into my scan and cut. And then once I've got my printable, load my printable image on my mat, call up the outline file for the printable and get my scan and cut to cut it, then go hit the home button, call up my cut file for my shaker elements and cut them and then I'm ready to assemble. So hopefully in the next part of the video I'll be showing you how to put one of these files together. Keep watching and that will be the next part of this video but for you it will just follow on in a minute continuously. Hi everyone, so now I've cut my elements and I'm just going to show you how to assemble it. So it's a bit sunny here today so I've got a bit of a shadow going on but hopefully you'll still be able to see what I'm doing. So this is the print and cut tag that I embellished up and added a ribbon and you can see it's got the shaker bits in it and this is the bottle shape. So I just want to show you, obviously, when you make your frame, you'll have this extra piece. So you could either put this on the back for, you know, like a bit of extra enforcement or use that for something else. So I'm just going to pop that on one side. So these are like your three elements that I showed you how to create in the previous section of the video. So you've got your base your frame and your acetate layer. I just chopped a bit off the, the, the base layer um, to create an extra little top. And then what I've also done, I've cut this base layer twice. 
So I've cut it in cardstock and I've cut it in paper because I want the paper to be in the background of my shaker bits, but it's a bit flimsy. So I'm going to stick that on top of there and that will create my base layer. Sorry, this shadow is awful. So I'm just going to stick this piece of pattern paper down onto my base initially like so and then I've got as I say my frame and my acetate now if you remember in the video I made the acetate a little bit smaller so that when I layer it onto here if I don't get it quite right I've got a little bit of wiggle room not sure how well you're going to see that acetate anyway so I'm just going to give my acetate a little bit of a wipe because it's probably got finger marks all over it. Just need to make sure that I'm doing this the right way around in case this bottle's not symmetrical. But it's not easy to see acetate when the sun is shining in on you. Right, okay, I think that's going to be okay. I'm just going to do it anyway. So I'm just going to add the tiniest little bit of um, adhesive wet adhesive all the way round the edge of this acetate um, and trying not to get my fingers in the glue and then I'm going to turn this over and I'm going to put this down onto the frame you do, do have to be careful um, you know if you're using wet glue another way that you could do this and I was going to do it but I must admit I completely forgot when you cut this frame out if you put some self-adhesive sheet on the back of your cardstock and then cut it out and then obviously you'll take that away you'll be left with paper on the back and you can peel it off and that makes that like a sticker so it's double-sided so I'm just going to put that to one side for a minute so basically I've got my frame this glare is awful and I don't know how to get rid of it I've got my frame and I've got my acetate stuck on the back now I normally like to put my 3d foam on my frame some people put it on the back element so they've got a kind of a well to put their bits in but it's entirely up to you but me personally I kind of find it a bit easier to do it on the frame so I've got some 3d foam strips here and they come in two different sizes and these are linked in my Amazon affiliate so I'm just going to put this foam now all around this frame and I may speed this bit up and the foam strips do bend so you know you can go round corners and things with them and what you want you want no gaps in your frame at all so you want to make sure that everything is all butted up to each other so you know like you your pieces probably won't go round unless you're doing something tiny your 3d foam won't go round your shape in one piece you will have to patch it so just make sure that you've got no gaps because your sequins or your whatever you're putting in as your shaker mix can escape through the gaps so I'm just going to keep going and then I'll come back when this is all done okay so this is what I've got so far so this is going to stick on top of this and have all the shaker elements inside now like I say you can do it two ways you could put your shaker elements in here peel off your paper and stick that on top or you can just put some shaker bits here peel off your paper and put that on top there's you know there's no right or wrong way you just find your own way I'm going to peel off my paper 
and I had to patch it down here in this little corner because my you know piece of tape that I used here didn't go all the way round so I'm going to peel off all this paper like so and then I'm going to bring in my sequins and I'm going to use some red and silver I think so I'm just going to pop some red ones in and obviously you want to be careful when you're popping these in because you don't want them sticking to that foam I've got a stray blue one there I'm going to take that out and you know again how many you use is entirely up to you you don't want it too full because you want it to be able to shake and if it's too full then you know your shaker bits won't won't move around so I'm just going to use red and silver I think on here so this box I think was from um where did I get this from does it tell me oh the range and it's got silver pink red and blue and then this pack is uh, in my Amazon shop and this is multicolored. Um, but I think I'm just going to use the red and silver for now and as I say just try and keep it away from the foam and then I'm going to try and position this now so it lines up. I'm not that great at putting my my 3D tape on so some of it may show through the back. So there's my shaker element. Then I'm going to pop this on, but I'm going to pop this one up on 3D foam just to give it a bit of dimension. I'm going to pop that on there, like so. And then just to add a little bit of decoration, I think I'm going to pop these on the on the bottom of the bottle. So these were from the Mega Bundle kit that I've used in previous videos. So everything will be linked in the accompanying blog post. So if you're watching this on YouTube, if you click directly under the description, you'll see it'll say more or show more. Click on that and that will give you a link directly to my website. Click on the blog tab and then just look for a picture of these products and everything will be linked in there so I'm going to stick this to this just for now just to cover up that little loop on that mitten like so and then I'm going to put this on here but I'm going to put it on with dimensional sorry I'm trying to keep out of that shadow this sun this low winter sun um is playing havoc with this video i'll see if i can edit it somehow when i edit this part of the video but hopefully you'll you know you'll get the gist so that's going to go on there so i'm going to put some 3d foam on here and here Let me just see how I'm going to do it so I can put a few pieces on the mitten. And you know, by no means am I an expert at making shakers. I've not, I've literally not made shakers until I made these recent ones. I've not made any for years and years. So I'm just going to kind of pop that on there like so. You could add a bow, you could, um, punch through this if you want and add a hanging loop or because this is only 3d foam I can probably feed some cord through there Let's see if we can do this I've got some white baker's cord should have thought about this before I put it on but I should be able to feed this through this gap hopefully might need the help of a pokey tool there you go got that through 
So I'll just cut a length of that. Um, this is probably going to be too long, but you know. My idea for these is I'm going to tie them onto presents. So when I wrap my Christmas presents and I wrap them, I always wrap them with like a ribbon bow. I'm going to suspend this from the ribbon bow. But I might also see if I can put a little bow on this as well. I'm not sure. Got some silver ribbon here. Uh, yeah, some silver ribbon. This might be a little bit too wide. It's the ribbon that I used on this one. How well you'll see that in this sun. But if I can make this a bit smaller, I might put that on the top like so. So let's just cut that and put that on there. I'll obviously try and get better photographs of this for the thumbnail, but I'm thinking I'll put that on there like so. So I'm going to add some wet glue there, put my bow on and that's obviously going to take a few minutes to grab so I'm just going to hold it down with a peg and then what I did on this one I don't know how well you'll see it can you see the shine I went over all this with glossy accents so again if you're new and you've not got any of these products these are all linked in my amazon affiliate shop so again when you just go to my blog post which is here on the screen down on the bottom of the home screen there are links to my amazon shop but also on the tabs along the top i think it's other craft pro products my Amazon store is listed in there as well. And all these products are in there. Now this goes on kind of milky, but it will dry clear and glossy. So once you've applied this, just put it on one side out of the way and don't touch it and let it dry. And if you get any air bubbles while you're putting it on, just pop them with the nib of the bottle. And you have to put this out of the way because the amount of times I've used in the past things like this or liquid pearl and just put them on one side and then you go and put a card or something down on your desk and you've put it on top of it and you've smudged it all is, you know, ridiculous. So once you've applied this, literally put it out of the way until it dries and it will go clear as I say so I'm just going to put my glossy accents out of the way so that's my little bottle shaker um, see if I've got a white pen handy I've got a white jelly roll pen here. I'm just going to add in, see if I can get this working. May have run out actually. I've had this a long time. Little bit of white detail just on the mitten. Take the peg off it for a minute. And as I say, don't be tempted to, you know, get a hold of these a lot. Let the glossy accents dry. But I'm not sure how well you'll see this, but it does, as I say, it goes on milky. But when it's dry, it dries. Can you see that shine? It dries completely clear, but glossy. So there are my two shaker elements. One made with just a simple shape and one made using print and cut. All the print and cut elements, again, are all Creative Fabrica. They will all be linked in the accompanying blog post. And, you know, the glossy accents, um, as I say, is in my Amazon affiliate. I'll try and link that in the blog post as well. But if you just click on my Amazon affiliates or Amazon favourites, 
and it's in the craft section it will be in there so that's how to make very very simple shaker cards using either a simple shape or using a print and cut basic shaker elements need a base a frame and some acetate so you need like three main ingredients if you like to make the shape and then obviously you need your shaker bits however whatever you're going to use some people use tiny little micro beads some people put um glitter in them i've just got as i say uh you know a few bits of sequins so that's what i've used if you've got any dies that make you know tiny little shapes you could maybe make your own shaker mix from small dies anything like that whatever you've got but anyway um one last thing to, to say what i would do when this is all dried i would get some rubbing alcohol on a piece of say kitchen paper or a lint free cloth and then just wipe over the acetate just to get rid of any you know fingerprints or any bits of fluff or anything that you might pick up along the way but I would do that when they're all completely dry but these are going to hang off Christmas presents for my family so I tend to wrap presents up quite simply you know maybe with um, a plain paper of some description and then I generally use either silver or gold ribbon I think I bought this off eBay I've, I've been buying it for years I just go and look for like one inch chiffon type ribbon and I buy it by the roll I've not got my gold one handy but this is the silver one and this was a, a full roll that had you know cardboard on the top and the bottom but it's all fell to pieces and you probably get about 50 yards or 100 yards on it I can't remember and I wrap my presents you know like like you would see you know wrap wrap round one way wrap round the other and I tie a big bow so what I would do with these I would put this the ribbon through this and tie my big bow and this would hang off the ribbon so because these have got silver on I'm probably going to maybe this year just use maybe some plain red or green paper and use the silver ribbon and then it will all kind of tie in and coordinate or you know on this one I could use plain blue paper but I would probably just pick one colour that will match all the colours in the tags that I'm making these only go on like close family so I don't have to make a lot of these anybody else will just get the present wrapped up with probably a bow or something but you know for like close family members I will wrap all their presents and I'll put something like this on just as an extra added decoration. Anyway, I hope you found it helpful. Um, please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't already do so. Subscribing doesn't cost you anything at all. Um, some people think that you've got to pay to subscribe to YouTube channels. You certainly don't. Basically, subscribing just means that if you've got your notification bell icon selected to tell you to you know to tell YouTube to notify you when a subscribed channel either posts a video or go like goes live you'll get notified so you know by subscribing you, you don't miss out on projects by a channel that you found that you like and by keeping the notification bell on it will let you know when that person posts a video or goes live so as I said please subscribe please give the video a thumbs up if you found you know this tutorial helpful if you can share it across your social platforms with any of your crafty friends that also helps you know people's channels out and I'll see you in the next video thank you